Welcome DIYers, Chris here with Toolbox DIY and today I'm going to show you how to convert a traditional fluorescent tube fixture to use the more energy efficient and maintenance friendly LED light tubes. I'm going to jump right into this conversion process but you should know that picking an LED bulb can be a little bit tricky. So stick around after I complete this and I'll walk through how to choose the bulb that's right for you. And as always, if you have any questions or need clarification about this video, please feel free to post those questions or comments down below. And also, please help support future videos by subscribing to the Toolbox DIY channel. Now, with my shameless plug out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to cover the tools and materials needed for this simple project. The tools you'll need include a screwdriver, likely a Phillips head, but you may need a flat head depending on how your ballast is installed. You'll also need wire strippers and a way to cut wires. If your wire strippers have a cutter, you can use those, but I prefer to use side cutters for that job. You may also find needle nose pliers to be handy when removing your lamp holders. Now onto the materials, you'll obviously need LED light tubes. This one here is a single ended, which I'll go into more detail about later. Because it's single ended, I also need a non-shunted lamp holder. I need one of these for every bulb that I plan on replacing. For the wiring, I need two wire connectors. I like these push-in wire connectors. You could also use wire nuts. One for hot and one for neutral. And I find it's also handy to have some nylon zip ties for tying up extra wire and getting it out of the way. The first step in this process is to disconnect the power at the circuit breaker. We don't want any electricity to be able to flow through this circuit while we're doing this. After that, you'll want to remove the existing fluorescent tubes, and then you're going to want to remove the reflector. Now, light fixtures differ. This particular one has these clips that need to be removed. Yours might have screws that need to be removed. But we need to remove this so we can access the wiring. And once we have that exposed, you'll see three wire nuts. One on the black, one on the white, and one on the green. You'll want to unscrew the wire nuts on the black and the white wires. Now at this point, you have a decision to make. You can work with the fixture on the ceiling, which saves you the trouble of removing it, or you can take it down. I chose to take it down, not only so I could show you how to do this, but I find that it's a lot easier. It was only four screws to take it down, and so if you choose to do that, you'll also need to remove the wire nut on the grounding wire, so you'll remove all three. Now, with the reflector out of the way and this ready to go, let's get started on removing the ballast and changing the lamp holders. Remove the ballast by cutting the wires near the ballast. If the ballast is still good and you want to keep it, leave enough wires for future use. The two ballasts in this fixture are both bad, so I'll be disposing of those at the hardware store. After you cut the wires, take your screwdriver and unscrew the mounting screw that holds the ballast in place. After you do that, reinstall that screw in its mounting hole. That way you don't lose it if you ever need to use it again. Now on this ballast, I'm actually going to cut off some of the black and white wires to use as pigtail wires that I'll demonstrate shortly. Now we're going to remove the existing lamp holders, also known as tombstones. I'm using single-ended LEDs, which I'll go into more detail about that a little bit later, but this means I need to replace the lamp holders, these non-shunted lamp holders, with shunted lamp holders. But I only need to do that for one end of each bulb. So I'm going to use, I'm going to replace all six of these that will service three bulbs on each side. And I'm going to do the ones here because it'll make wiring a lot easier. Now to get these out, there are little tabs on each side that you need to press in and push it through. If your fixture is like mine, that's made a little bit easier by just removing this. So now we can pinch these in. It's probably easier to do one end at a time. And we'll do that for all six. Now we take our new tombstones and they just snap in from the other side, underside. Uh, if you can't remove the, um, the bracket here for the tombstones, uh, it's quite easy just to push them through the underside. They pop right in. So we'll do all six of those. So 
So we're now we're ready to wire all these tombstones together and we'll use these push-in wire connectors. So we'll separate all of the neutrals and all of the hots since those all those wires will each be combined into one of these. So we just push those in and once they go in they won't come out. Now I want to install a pigtail on each of these. So rather than taking my home wiring and pushing the wire directly into here, by using a pigtail I can twist onto that wire. That way if I ever need to remove the fixture it's much easier to do so. So I'm just taking the wire that was left over from the old ballast and I'll strip each end to make these pigtails. Okay, now we'll clean this up by wrapping up the extra and using some zip ties to keep it out of the way. Now on the other ends of the fixture, the lamp holders serve no electrical purpose, but they are important because these are the lamp holders that actually secure the other end of the light tube. So we can reuse the existing holders and we don't need to replace the ones that you see here. Now if you have any wires that are loose from cutting out the ballast, uh, we probably want to get those out of the way, so we'll just bundle those up and secure them with some zip ties. So that concludes the wiring portion of this. So now I'm going to get the light reinstalled on the ceiling so we can then make our electrical connections. The pigtail wires we installed into the wire connectors allow us to easily connect to the electrical circuit using wire nuts. So we'll connect those black to black, white to white, and ground to ground. And after that, we're ready to reinstall the light reflectors and then install the bulbs. With these LED bulbs, the light reflector doesn't do much reflecting since LED lights are constructed to direct the light downward, unlike the fluorescent tubes that emit light in every direction around the tube. However, the reflectors are important because they hide the wiring and it would look kind of funny if you didn't reinstall them. Okay, with everything installed, now we're ready to turn on the power at the breaker and test our lights. There you have it. Everything works. And now we have a functioning light using LED tubes. So that covers the conversion for changing your fluorescent light fixture to use LED tubes. Very simple and it doesn't take much time at all. It'll probably take about a half an hour per fixture. Once you get the hang of it, it'll probably take you less time than that. The tricky part about this is choosing the right LED bulb. So let's take a minute to talk about the different LED bulbs available and why I chose this one. LED tubes are either single-ended or double-ended. The ones I just installed are single-ended, which means wiring is applied to only one end of the tube. One pin is for the hot and the other pin is for the neutral. Double-ended LED tubes get wiring at both ends, one end for hot, the other end for neutral. So why choose one over the other? Well, the double-ended LED tubes have the advantage that they can typically be used with the existing lamp holders in your fixture. However, at the time of this filming, there are far fewer double-ended LED choices on the market. Also, there have been some safety concerns that have been raised by individuals about double-ended LED tubes not being UL certified, even though they say they are. But I'll leave it to you to decide if they're right for you and to do your own research. Single-ended LED tubes are much easier to find. However, these require replacing, well, typically replacing, at least one of the lamp holders per bulb in your fixture. The lamp holders required are called non-shunted lamp holders. A shunted lamp holder is quite common in fluorescent fixtures, and what this means is that the connection points inside the connector are shorted or connected together. 
This would create an electrical short, so if you use that, you wouldn't actually get power to the LED tube. So we have to replace one end lamp holder with a non-shunted connector, just like the ones that I use in the conversion that you just watched. There are two ways to tell if you have shunted or non-shunted tombstones. If there's one wire going to the tombstone, that's typically shunted. And also here, this one has two wires, but it's daisy chaining a lamp holder over here, which means there is a short inside here to make that connection over here. So it is shunted. The other way to determine if you have shunted or non-shunted is to use a multimeter. Here's an inexpensive multimeter that's set to me measure resistance. If these are shunted, the resistance should be extremely low, uh, like in the single digits. So what we do, I have to turn these because they have a locking connector on them. I turn it so I can expose both sides of the contacts. And then I probe here, if I can get it done correctly. You see there, I've got a resistance of about 5 ohms. It's kind of fluctuating. That would indicate that it is shunted. If it were non-shunted, I wouldn't get much of a reading at all. In fact, let's take, let's take one of the non-shunt that I have and try that. So here we have a non-shunted, like the ones that I installed. And if we probe these two connections, we get nothing because they are not connected or shorted. The second feature of LED bulbs you want to look for is whether or not they require a ballast. Some do, some don't, and some give you the option of using a ballast or not. Personally, I recommend removing or bypassing your ballast. And I recommend this because ballasts fail. I've replaced five, I think, yeah, five ballasts in the last three years, and quite frankly, I'm tired of doing that. So if you remove it or you bypass it, you'll save yourself potentially a future repair that really doesn't serve much purpose. Lastly, you'll want to look at the output and the color temperature of the bulb to figure out what's right for you. The output of a bulb, the m amount of light that it produces, is measured in lumens. And the higher that number, the more light it will produce. The color is measured as a temperature called Kelvin. If you like a warm uh, orange or yellow color, you'll want to look for a 3000 Kelvin light. If you like a more cool white, then look for 4 to 4500 Kelvin, sorry, 4000 to 4500 Kelvin. And if you like more of a daylight, then you'll want a 5000 Kelvin or higher. Well, that concludes today's how-to video for converting your fluorescent light fixture to use the new LED light tubes. Thanks for joining me, and be sure to subscribe to the Toolbox DIY YouTube channel for updates on future videos. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.